Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Friday Night is Organ Music Night. And thank you to a few of you for recognizing that simple yet effective melody. Yes, that was indeed My Sweet Lord by uh, none other than George Harrison. Tomorrow, the 25th of February, would have been George... Wait, wait, wait for this. This is how old you're about to feel. Um, it would have been his 80th birthday. Yeah, George Harrison would have been 80 tomorrow, were he still alive. Mm. Sadly, we lost George back in 2001, 22 years ago now. Unbelievable. And um, I thought we would um, celebrate a little bit tonight by playing the occasional number by George Harrison in between all the other bits and pieces we've got lined up for you this evening. So, um, as Steve said, that's one of the most repetitive pieces he's ever heard. That's the whole point. Um, the whole piece of music was based around um, a chant, the chant, of course, being the Hare Krishna chant. And that is, of course, a repetitive chant, much like uh, Kyrie eleison or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah? All religions have repetitive chants, and George and his um, Hare Krishna trip was no <laughs> exception. So anyway, there will be a bit of that coming up tonight. We also have some other birthdays. My goodness me, we have, um, we've got at least two other birthdays this evening. Whose birthday? I saw on the chat on the way past. It's somebody's birthday right now, which means... I beg your pardon? Who? Where is he then? Let me find this. Do we have someone there? Oh, there we are. Fiete Mielke. Fiete Mielke. How, how on earth do we pronounce that? All right. It's probably... It's probably a name that's been hidden. Blue eyed cat. Blue eyed cat is or was birthday? Oh, it was. All right. So we've had a blue eyed cat birthday and the Fielte Mielke or whatever it was birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to the two of them. And at midnight, we will be celebrating two more birthdays. So that means in one hour and 40 minutes' time. So do hang around. Okay, here we are. Happy birthday to. Um, what was it? FK or FM? FM and Blue-Eyed blue, blue -eyed Cat. Is that the one? Blue-Eyed Cat. I know a piece of music called a One-Eyed Cat, but anyway, that's something different. <laughs>
that's what that was called. I just fancied playing that for our birthday people. Um, someone said, that's the piece of music called The One-Eyed Cat. No, The One-Eyed Cat is a wonderful piece of music from uh, Henry Mancini, which goes much... Hold on, I need to play around with this. It goes much like uh, this. You need a bassoon. Which you can hardly hear. Hold on. That's it. That's this, I think. And then it goes on like that and does all sorts of other things. I can't remember. But that's um, Henry Mancini at his best. What does a one-eyed cat sound like? Well, to him, it sounds like either a bass clarinet or a bassoon. Isn't that cool? There you are. Anyway, there you are. Useless pieces of information for you. Now, hmm. We have a wonderful request that came in tonight, and that ties into the world of George Harrison rather nicely, actually. For those of you who don't know, George Harrison was the guitarist of a band that was quite famous in the 1960s. What was their name again? Something to do with insects. Yes, the Beatles. But the Beat, B-E-A-T, obviously, so the Beatles, because it's the Beat, get it? Uh, uh, yeah, back in the 60s, people could get away with that. Um, you know, all very simple stuff. And these, these four, or at the beginning, five young guys got together and formed this band. And George was the guitarist, um, the solo guitarist. They all played guitar in their own little way, but George was sort of the, the solo guitarist. And at the beginning of the Beatles career, he sort of hung around in the background and was allegedly the shy one. What a load of rubbish that was. Now he's shy about it. Um, and, um, and over the years, he finally managed to sort of push his way through the Lennon and McCartney um, empire, as it were, um, and actually composed some of the most famous tunes the Beatles ever had. George Harrison went on to be the world's richest musician for a while um, because, of his, um, because of his royalty payments. Don't forget, Lennon and McCartney sold their royalty rights off to various people, including Michael Jackson at some point. Um, Paul McCartney now has some of his rights back, so he's making some money again. He was almost bankrupt a few years ago. Serves him right. Um, but George Harrison, and now his son Danny, who inherited the entire empire. Um, incredibly, incredibly wealthy guys. So there you are. There you are. Useless pieces of information, I'm sure you will understand. Now, here's a piece of music that was actually written by Lennon and McCartney, but not for them. They wrote it for their drummer, Mr. Starkey otherwise known as Ringo Starr. Real name, Richard Starkey. There you are, hence the star, you see, that's where that came from, Ringo Starr. And Ringo, because he wore lots of rings. Anyway, um, so um, this piece of music was written for Ringo, and a lot of people think Ringo actually wrote it himself, but um, because of the um, empire around him, the Lennon and McCartney empire, he didn't get anything from it. Who knows what the truth behind that is. There is actually, there's quite a lot of the Beatles numbers actually that were allegedly written by Lennon and McCartney, but that's not true. They were just published by Lennon and McCartney. Anyway, I bore you with my talk. This is a request from Jez, our friend Jez M. And um, this piece of music is, was actually sung by Ringo Starr during Beatles days, but over the years it has become more famous through performances by other performers. I think the most famous of those would have to be Mr. Joe Cocker, who left this world a lot later than everyone thought he would. Let's put it like that. When did Joe Cocker die? 20, it must be getting on for 10 years ago. 14, I think? 13 or 14, yes. December 14, I think, is when Joe Cocker died. Correct me if I'm wrong. Look it up in Google. I think December 2014 was when Joe Cocker left us. And uh, he, it's amazing he made it that long with his consumption, shall we say. 
Uh, but here is possibly one of his most famous performance pieces. I'm going to hide it so that we don't get too many copyright claims from this. But it is, of course, with a little help from my friends. And Jez and I are going to dedicate it to the entire Garchor gang out there. Because without your help, none of this here would be possible. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your little help. No, thank you for your grand help over the years, over the last months and years. Without you, none of this would be possible. So from Jez and from me, thank you. With a little help from my friends.
I get by with a little help from my friend. This is an amazing organ for this kind of music. It just sort of dawned on me. Again, a repetitive piece of music, but repetition means recognition. And that's what gets people sort of uh, into these things. I'm trying to think. I never met, I never met Joe Cocker. I never saw him perform live. Mm. I would have loved to, because apparently he was, well, in his early days, he was an absolute rebel and hell to work with. But later on, apparently, he was quite good to work with. What's that then? Ooh, who's that from? No, 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 no. That's a practice. That's from Andrew. 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 No, okay. Ooh, someone's, someone's sending me Bach. Oh, we can do that. We can do that. Yes, if you send Bach to be played as a, as a request, um, give yourselves at least six years before you hear it. <laughs> uh, yes, Bach is something that takes a long time to perfect. Can I play Lober den Herrn? Yes, I can. Do you want me to? <laughs> um, oh, why not, actually? Why not? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we like spontaneous requests. Um, playable spontaneous request. Some people request it. For example, here's one we got. Our friend Xing Chang Chong, or whatever his name is, however we pronounce it. I'm going to call him Xing Chang Chong because that's as far as we get. Um, um, he sent me a wonderful piece of music, a wonderful piece of music, a Chinese piece of music, and said, Can you play this? And he sent me a YouTube video with a recording, and it was played on that sort of YouTube, uh, not YouTube, that Chinese, you know, hitty thing. You know, it's like a, you know, piano strings that you hit with little hammers, whatever you call that instrument, I have no idea. Um, and it's a beautiful piece of music, a uh, very lovely piece of music, sort of, you know, one of those sort of um, atmospheric pieces of Chinese music. Very lovely. But trying to get it to, you know, to work on the organ, I tried and I tried and I tried and I just couldn't get it to work, uh, to sound like it. So I'm going to work on that and see what I can do with it. Um, you know, and that's the kind of thing, it takes a while to get around some of those things. So some requests that come in, we've got a list of requests actually over on the desk there. Vanessa has a list of requests. Um, we have a wonderful request, a piece of music by Bach arranged by Virgil Fox. I think that was another one that just came in there as well. Those are great pieces of music, but they need to be practiced. You can't sight read those. I have a wonderful piece of music. Dominic Eckhard sent something rather wonderful a couple of weeks ago, which is unplayably difficult. And again, needs to be practiced. So. Bear with us. But, yeah, the Hackbrett, Johannes, that's the uh, German version, but yes, the Chinese version of the Hackbrett, that's right. Um, that kind of thing. Anyway, right, who wanted Lober den Herrn? Somebody wanted Lober den Herrn. Somebody wanted that. So thank you very much. Lober den Herrn is a very good one. Don't forget, if you want to help us out, put a penny or ten or a hundred in the tip jar. Uh, there's a link there. And um, a very, very nice way for you to say thank you and keeps us going. So thank you very much indeed. If you have requests, it's like a jukebox, isn't it? Yes, so, so there you are. So there you are. Put a penny in the jukebox and we will see what we can do. Oh my goodness, Vanessa's printing all sorts of things out. Lober den Herrn, right? Let's play around with Lober den Herrn. This is, it's Lent, by the way, which means we should be, we should be giving up on things. I'm giving up on, what am I giving up for Lent? I have no idea. Uh, actually, I, yes, I, yes, I haven't had any chili on my food since Tuesday. Yeah, that works, doesn't it? Ich habe kein Chili gehabt seit Dienstag, ne? Auf mein Essen. Oh. Also, dann mache ich das für Lent. Kein Chili. Für Fastenzeit. Keine Ahnung. Also, you, you have to give something up. What are you giving up for Lent? Vanessa's giving up. She's, she's not giving anything up for Lent. There you are. <laughs> Anyway, right, here we go, here we go. Lower den Herrn, let's see what we can do with this.
Oh boy. Right. That was Lobe den Herrn. That's, it's also it's an international hymn, so it's known under all sorts of different languages. And uh, all sorts of... Who was it? There we are. It was Damian2604 who was playing it. 13 years old and is learning to play the organ. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Ja, toll. Toll, dass du jetzt die Orgel lernst und äh, toll, dass ich dir dabei helfen kann. Äh, ich finde das toll. Schön. Weiter so. Weiter, weiter, weiter so. Immer schön. Wir brauchen Nachwuchs an der Orgel. I just said in German there, we need uh, the next generation. We need the upcomers to help out in the organ world. Around the world, not just in here, in this part of the world. All around the world, we need people to help out and uh, you know, get the organ world known around the world. It's still all very much connected to the church and you know, all that kind of thing, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But we need to sort of separate it a little bit so that it gets a more interesting you know, more interest in the instrument. It's not just a church instrument. Now, don't forget the organ did not start out as a church instrument, yeah? The organ started out as an instrument of entertainment. So there you are. <laughs> Never forget that. And the organ is perfectly capable of playing absolutely anything at all. There we are. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Right. Hold on. What's that? We've got some other things coming in, spontaneous things. Let's have a look. What's that, first of all? Shush. This is <laughs> all right. Let's have a look at that first. Da -da -da -da. Ooh, all pages there. That's a ten. That's an eleven. That's a twelve, and that's a thirteen. Yes, they're all there. Right. That looks all right. Oh, there's even fingering on there for me as well. That's good. Right. This is a piece of ragtime music that was requested. Ragtime music from the words of I guess is this Scott Joplin? I don't know. I think it is. <coughs> Excuse me. I think this is Scott Joplin. Oh, look, we've got fingers there. Are those Steffi's fingers? Look, 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 look. There are fingers on the, on the scan. There we are. We have fingers. Okay. What's that? And there's a, oh, is it a tablecloth as well. My goodness me. Live from the Wunderlich household. Here we go. Um, um, Steffi. Steffi Wunderlich. That's Alexander Wunderlich's daughter. Steffi is learning to play ragtime music, not only on the piano, also on the organ, which is rather wonderful. And um, it's amazing. Who on earth would ever want to play ragtime music on the organ? Me, for example. Uh, I think it's great fun. So it's wonderful that Steffi wants to do this. And Steffi sent me a spontaneous request. I'm guessing, yes, it is a Scott Joplin. It's from 1901 which is incredibly old. Imagine how old that is now. And it's called the Picherine Rag. What is a Picherine? Let's ask Joe. Joe, what is a Picherine? And why would Scott Joplin write a rag about it? The most important thing about ragtime music is the instruction in the top left-hand corner. Not too fast. Don't forget, this was music to be danced to.
the Peacherine rag. And I do apologise for getting the second bit wrong. I forgot to read the key signature. Ha, <laughs> silly me. Uh, <laughs> spontaneous things can happen, ladies and gentlemen. It can always happen. A wonderful, fun piece of music, don't you think? The Peacherine rag. That's a keepy. That's a keepy. My goodness me, what on earth is going on here? All well, right, lots of spontaneity coming in. I think it's time for another one of these magnificent numbers. Uh, from the pen of Mr. H, Mr. Harrison. Um, most of it's wonderful music. It really is absolutely wonderful. And something that George did that nobody else did, and this is when they had, remember, remember the Beatles had an Indian phase. They all swanned off to India in the mid-60s and discovered a little more than coriander and turmeric, shall we say. Um, and they came back, and they came back and took the sort of the things they learned with them. Ooh. And George in particular um, got lots of his musical inspiration from Indian stuff. Not only harmony, but particularly rhythm. So you will find in a lot of George's songs not much in the way of dancey rhythm. It's all sort of all over the place. And this is probably the best example of that. Um, there's a wonderful part in the middle of this song where it does all sorts of things in different key signatures. Yeah, that's one bar of music. How many beats were there? One and a half, three, plus two and a half. So that's three, four, five, five and a half. Yeah, five and a half beats in a bar. That's the kind of thing. Um, wonderful, wonderful stuff. The piece of music in question is in the despicable key of A major, which is not my favourite key, let's face it. Um, and allegedly the piece of music came about when George and his friend Eric Clapton were hanging about of a summer evening outside in the garden. Now, when I say outside in the garden, this is like a park the size of... Central Park, this was George's garden. He lived in an enormous estate in the middle of a place called Henley-on-Thames, which is pretty close to Windsor, actually. And his estate right in the middle, right in the middle of town, huge, it even had its own lake. There you are, that's a bigger one. And uh, George and Eric were hanging about, and uh, early in the morning, Eric said, oh Christ, how long have we been out? Look, here comes the sun. And George said, that's a good idea for a song. So the pair of them sat down and wrote it. There you are.
Here comes the sun. Do -do -do -do. A wonderful piece of music, isn't it? And it, I love the rhythms you've got. You've got this, and here. So there's that going on at the beginning, yeah? So I'll uh, pop that down a bit, yeah? You've got that. Yeah? And that's already sort of a nice cross rhythm to get you dancing. But this bit... It does this. Listen to this. One, 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 two, three, one. That's what you think it does. It doesn't do that. So let's split it up. It does. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. So you've got to think five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You're thinking sort of eleven, four. No, eleven, eight. Which is five and a half. Yeah, there we are. See? A bar that's five and a half beats long. But you can't think like that. You have to think in three, three, five, and then eight. Three, three, five, and then eight. It's very bizarre. And that's, you know, George was a master at doing that. And imagine, you know, everyone said, for example, Ringo Starr was a terrible drummer. No, he wasn't. He came up with the incredibly difficult drumming pattern for that. So, can't have been that bad. Mm. Anyway, wonderful stuff. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Vanessa, my darling wife. Mm -hmm. How are we doing on tickets this evening? Schlecht. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us out. Please consider buying a ticket on the way past, a virtual concert ticket, a tip for the tip jar, a penny for the jukebox, whatever you want to call it. Help us out if you can. We'd be very, very grateful indeed. And without your help, with a little help from our friends, none of this would, well, would be possible or none of this would be able to keep going. We're desperately saving up at the moment. Um, I know this is, this is a first world problem, I know, but we're desperately saving up at the moment for... <laughs> um, storage. I'm running... Here, show me my little Festplatte, bitte. Here. Yeah, these things. I've been using external hard drives for years. This one is so old, it's falling apart. Um, and we are running out of space. I've started, believe it or not, I've started deleting old media files. Now, all of the YouTube videos that I have ever posted ever, they are all saved on these things. External drives all over the place. And we're running out of space. So I have started, this is one of the oldest ones, so I've started removing old files from this. And that's never a good idea. You never know when you're going to need those old files again. <sighs> so we're saving up at the moment. We're saving up for some network storage. Um, I've spoken to a few experts. And they, they all suggested get yourself a network, what's it called? Network Attached Storage Device, NAS, NAS. They all said get one of them, plug it into, well, get yourself a home network, as it were, plug it into the router, basically. And it probably means I could even run Hauptwerk from it as well. I could keep all my media files, I can add to all my media files, and I could, of course, then work from that, keep all my files together. <sighs> keep all my files together. So. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're saving up for at the moment. So if you want to help us out a bit, thank you very much indeed. Um, anything that's coming in over the next little while will most likely be going towards something along those lines. Um, what do they cost? I have no idea. The device itself is a couple of hundred bucks, but you need to have disks inside it, yeah? Big hard disks inside it, and I don't know. Um, they can put four big hard disks inside it and it costs whatever it costs. You can put four eight terabyte disks in there, you can put four 20 terabyte disks in there. It depends you know, how much you get. The more you could get, the better, obviously. And like I said, very much a first world problem. But that's what we're working on at the moment so that we don't have to um, get a JBOD. What on earth is that? I've no idea what a JBOD is, but anyway, yes. What I don't want to do is have just here, just this drives because if this fails then all my stuff is gone forever so you have to have like a i'm not very good at computer stuff someone like uza Maya could probably tell me here and tell me what this is about um, but you get several discs together link them in a certain way and even if one of those discs was bad you don't lose all your stuff because it's all saved all over the place with codes and i don't know i don't know how these things work but there you are so yeah that's what we're working on at the moment because, um, yeah, we're creating content, 
and we're running out of space. So there you are. Anyway, right, enough of that. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is, ah, Fabian. You see, Fabian had the idea. Fabian has already bought us a little ticket in the background. Thank you, Fabian. Let's have that one there. That's from Don Prince, is it? Yeah. Don right. This is, ooh, right, Don Prince. Our friend Don has given us here RAID. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Cam. RAID 5. I, I have no idea what that means, but yes, that sounds fine. <laughs> um, yes, RAID is what it's called. Random. No, it's not called random, is it? It's something about array of something disks. R-A-I-D. No idea what that means. Get the biggest terabyte drives you can. Yes, Jez, that's the plan. Right, anyway, enough of that technical talk. Back to the music. This is for Don, our friend Don Prince from the Netherlands, uh, <coughs> from Holland. And um, we all know that the Dutch are very into their hymns and their psalms, and uh, they love their church music. And this here... Okay, this is not a melody I recognize, but this is a traditional, I'm guessing, Dutch melody, and it looks rather lovely. The melody is from 15... 97, good heavens, very, very old, but the arrangement that, Do did Don send this or did you find it? Uh, Vanessa found it? Oh, Vanessa found it, right, that's good. So this is, this is, uh, let's hope it's correct then, in that case, Don, it will be, of course it will be correct. And this is a version of it, an arrangement of it from someone called Edvard Kremser, who was, who lived between 1838 and 1914. So, there you are. Uh, it's in D major, and I'm guessing I can put some naughty harmonies in there. Let's see what we can do with it. Let's play around with this for our friend Don.
God, that was loud. That was a, that just peaked there. Don't know, did you hear that? Right at the end, there was a little sort of audio peak. That's not the audio system doing that. Oh, we've got a very clever audio system running at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's the, uh, it's the it's actually the internal Hopfuck audio overloaded there. <gasps> Can you believe that? Amazing. Mm. Cheers, everybody. What a wonderful piece of music. Thank you, Don. That's a keepy. That's actually, there's German words to that. Vanessa found a German version of that. It's amazing how many things, how many connections the Germans had with the Dutch over the years. One of my favorite connect, one of my favorite connections of them all between the Germans and the Dutch. I think this is just one of the most hilarious things that ever happened in the world. Kaiser Wilhelm II, Kaiser Bill, um, the last German emperor, Kaiser. Um, at the end of the First World War, he was sort of forced to abdicate and um, he didn't know where to go. He was lost. And he was stuck at the Belgian border and he thought, right, we need to get back to Germany. And everyone said, don't go back to Germany, they'll take you prisoner and kill you. So he phoned around, or whatever you did in 1918, he phoned around and eventually the, the Dutch king said, come on, we'll look after you. So he headed off to Holland and he spent the rest of his life, from 1918 to 19, when did he die? 41, I think. Spent the rest of his life in Holland, living in a house he bought with his own money in Holland and uh, had, a, had a wonderful time. He just basically chopped down trees, went hunting and smoked himself to death as a very happy man. He, he even grew a very sort of uh, wonderful sort of hipster beard. Instead of his fancy moustache, he grew a really fancy beard and was very sort of, uh, he sort of turned into a real sort of gentleman of leisure in Holland and learned Dutch um, and, you know, had a, had a nice life again. And the Dutch looked after him really nicely. His cousin, his cousin George V, um, <laughs> King George V, invited him to come to Britain and said, look, come on, we'll look after you over in Britain. And he said, no, because you ended up um, killing or having your other cousin killed. His other cousin, of course, being Tsar Nicholas of Russia. This is a history lesson tonight. This is really exciting, isn't it? So anyway, yes. Uh, they were all, well, no, that's not true. They weren't all grandsons, um, but they were, they were all cousins. George was the cousin in the middle, and uh, they were all related. Don't forget, Kaiser Wilhelm and George V were both grandsons of Queen Victoria. Ah, aren't these all wonderful? It's all incest. In incest. Fun for all the family. Anyway, there we are. Right. Enough history. Let's get on with that. So, there you are. Don, see what you started. Don, with your German and Dutch connections there madness. Let's have that. That looks like Henry Mancini. Mm -hmm. This mid lover. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's the what's that underneath? What's that? That's just That's one. Peter. What is that then? What is that? Well, that's not right. Ah, da, 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 da. oh, that's cool. Oh, we'll do that on a theater organ. We'll change the theater organ. We'll do that later. What's yeah, that? That is for Joe. What's for Joe? Silver threads and something. All right, what is that? My God, what's this? Yeah, oh. like what on earth? Like Vanessa's... Like How on earth am I supposed to read that? Vanessa printed screenshots for me. How am I supposed to read that? Yeah, we couldn't find it otherwise. All right, can I save... Can I save that for Sunday and look at it? Because that, that's just constant. But there's, a, there's like three bars to a page and then turn pages. <laughs> really? No, because that's backwards and forwards and backwards. All right, Joe, I'll tell you what we'll do, Joe. We'll save that for Sunday. We'll save that for Sunday and we'll paste it together. Yeah, that, so geht das nicht. Ich hab nur zwei Augen. <laughs> right, what's that then? Let's have that. <gasps> Who's this for? This yellow oh, yellow bird. Ah, yellow bird. Right, yellow bird. Yellow bird. I see people are still talking about, people are talking about network storage in the background. It's nice to see that the Gaucho gang really is as geeky as the Gauchos themselves. So that's really cool. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, th here, anyone who can help us out with this network storage stuff, yeah? Let me know. Send us an email. Send us an email, gang at gaucho.de. Anyone who can help us out with this would be absolutely amazing because, um, yeah, 
I know nothing about this kind of thing. I just, I, this is what I know about. And um, yeah, all the other stuff is a great mystery. Having said that, I did put that PC together all by myself and it works and it's still worked every time. It's, we've never had a problem with it. So, fingers crossed, it stays that way. <laughs> mm. Now, earlier on this evening, I played you a piece of music. I played you a very brief version of a piece of music called The One-Eyed Cat. Composer, Henry Mancin. I think that's how it goes, isn't it? The One-Eyed Cat. Look it up, it's wonderful stuff. Now this, however... This, however, is a much more exciting piece of music. The, you recognise those chords, don't you? Everyone recognises those chords at the end of a piece of music. Henry Mancini was a very amazing composer, a wonderful composer, an amazing jazz musician, amazing arranger, amazing orchestrator, but some of the one most wonderful pieces of music were the simplest. And here is perhaps one of the simplest. And again, going back to the beginning, this is great, so thank you, Yellowbird. Going back to the beginning of this evening's chant with My Sweet Lord, this is a piece of music that has a kind of bass ostinato feature that never stops. Cue the copyright claims, here we go, with... That's all it does. It's kind of like a big boogie. You do with your feet as well, which I was trying to do all the rest of the time. And then you got these wonderful big band chords. And isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And then the chords at the end are just so wonderful. It's in G flat, but... Oh, 
lots of calls with sharp 11ths and 13ths and weird numbers that nobody understands. Isn't that wonderful? Woohoo! Peter Gunn. Thank you, Yellowbird. Yes, that's different. I don't think we've ever played that on the organ before. And I got it. I got it so wrong, I might not even get a copyright claim on it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a tasty beverage, which means it's time for you, Gartshore Gang members, to find the tasty emoticon emoji thing. Here we go. Vanessa's doing the tasty beverage. <gasps> oh, is that it? The tide, ladies and gentlemen, is evidently out. Or maybe she doesn't trust me. I'll spill it all over the place. Rob has put hell on toast. Yes, hell on toast. That was, that's Bach, basically. Hell on toast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps the most beautiful piece of music ever written. And I'm not making that up. That was, uh, that was said by, that was said by Frank Sinatra, believe it or not. Frank Sinatra said the most beautiful piece of music he'd ever heard was written by an Englishman. That's what he said. And the Englishman in question was our tomorrow birthday boy, Mr. George Harrison. And it, it is, of course, the most beautiful piece of music called Something. That's its actual name. It's called Something. It's not called Something. It's called Something. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover. Like no other lover. So anyway, yes, this uh, George never expected this to become the big hit it was. This piece of music single-handedly, um, single-handedly um, <laughs> catapulted his royalty earnings into the hundreds of millions. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Here's a fun fact for you. A fun fact for you. In the world of royalty multimillionaires or almost billionaires, I don't think there is actually a billionaire in the music world royalty-wise. But uh, the two closest people, I think there are about 800 and 90, 900 million now, the George Harrison empire and... Any ideas who it might be? Any ideas who it might be? Neil Sedaka. There you are. Neil Sedaka, who's still very much with us and still posting on YouTube. Um, yeah, one of the wealthiest musicians ever to have lived.
I see in the background Joe and uh, Joe and Vanessa are having fun in the background uh, on our buy me a coffee thing. Buy me a coffee for what's that? Four million three hundred thousand. Yes, that would be quite nice. Jez was asking what the base registration was there, but uh, basically all the thirty-two foot stops apart from the thirty-two foot read. This organ, it's Billerbeck, has two. It's called a grand flute, which sounds great, doesn't it? A grand flute 32 and a bouldon 32, and they give that big, rumbly, incredible bassy effect there. So there you are. There you are. That was something by our friend George Harrison. Um, yes, Joe in the back. Joe's, uh, Joe and Cam, actually. Joe and Cam. That's Joe Humans and Cameron Platts. Um, they are very good at the moment at sort of pushing us in the direction of something called buy me a coffee. Um, or in our case, buy me a cuppa, because we don't, I don't drink coffee. I only drink tea, and Vanessa doesn't drink anything. She just drinks water. She's got a big bottle of water there, and that's it. She only drinks still water, bottled, of course. Um, but yeah, if you don't like PayPal, and some people don't like PayPal for whatever reason, there is this thing called, Vanessa, buy me a coffee? There's this thing called buy me a coffee. And it's, it's there for, you can help us out there as well. You can buy me a coffee to say thank you, to put a tip in the jar. But there is something there we have on buy me a coffee called a wish list. And there are two or three items on that wish list at the moment. There is our network storage device that we were talking about earlier. There you are, Vanessa, thank you very much. But also there's a birthday present for Vanessa on there as well. Now, since we started this live streaming however long ago, we've been using this thing here, the Black Magic Design ATEM Mini Pro. And it's been amazing. It hasn't, touch wood, it hasn't cocked up anything. It's been doing all the streaming for us. Now there's a bigger version of it. There's a bigger version of it, which does more. It means that Vanessa can put more graphics in there. It means we can do more split screens. You know, we could have, you know, we have three cameras running. Well, we actually have more cameras, but we can't do anything with them because we don't have the um, possibilities. We have our overhead camera, the spider cam. We have the foot camera, the foot cam. And we have the main camera. That's the one I'm talking at right now. Now, we do have another very good camera, but there's nowhere to put it at the moment. We can't sort of, you know, wire it up to things. So we could do that. And then we could do split screen stuff. So we could have all four cameras on at once, if you know what I mean, yeah? We could have graphics. Vanessa could, instead of doing things in the chat, she could have things like going up on the screen to say thank you to, I don't know, who did you just say thank you to last, Vanessa? Wen hast du gerade gedankt? Jerry. So, hello, Je oh, Jerry's here tonight. Hello, Jerry, yay. So Vanessa just said, uh, thank you message to Jerry. But rather than just having that in the chat for only the people in the chat to read, that would appear on the screen for everybody to read, see? And this could be done all, this could be done in the background. And uh, for that, we are also going to be saving up for the big machine for Vanessa, basically. And another thing it can do, it records, this is very clever, it records all, all the cameras individually so that you can take those files and mix them together in new videos at a later date. So that's a very exciting thing. So anyway, go and check out our wish list on Buy Me A Coffee as well. Those are the things we are currently saving up for. The ATEM Mini is going to be for Vanessa. And it's Cam's idea that it's going to be Vanessa's birthday present. So that's the end of March. It's going to be Vanessa's birthday present. And the other thing, the network storage, that's basically so that we can stop faffing about with these stupid things, which are all full now. And I'm, like I said, if you joined us uh, later this evening, I've had to start deleting uh, old media files, old uploads and things like that, because we just have no space on any drives to put them anywhere. Oh, running out of space. Ooh. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, I have a task oh, hold on. Oh, oh, good heavens, yes. Well, I'll tell you what, let's play a piece of music and then we'll do that. Cam. This is for Cam. This looks rather nice. What's this then? What is it? I know it not, but I know the composer. All right. Oh my goodness me. Oh, this is an arrangement of that by him. Oh my God. All right. Well, I'm certainly not going to play it that way because that's impossible. Right. Let's do that in a moment. Thank you, Cam. Let's do that in a moment. And in the meantime, let's have... Nine. What do you mean, nine? I wanted to play a piece in demo because I just talked a lot. So I'm going to do music, then we'll talk more. Ah. Ah. Then we'll do music and we'll talk more. Right. 
Let's have a different piece of the Beatles music here, just for a change. This is not a George Harrison piece per se, but he did write it with the person who then got the official thank yous. Um, uh, yes. I remember the, 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 the dynasty that was Lennon and McCartney tried to, you know, keep everything for themselves. And later on in the Beatles' career, George started to get a bit of push. And poor old Ringo was left in the background. But one day, George, together with Ringo, wrote a song. And George said, no, you have it, and you can correct, collect the royalties from it. And it's a rather cute piece of music. And uh, Ringo wrote it for his daughter. <laughs> I love the ending of that. It's so simple but cute. That little bit of blah, 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 at the end. It's like a bubble bursting under the water, isn't it? I think that's so cute. Anyway, there you are. In an octopus's garden. How many legs does an octopus have? Eight. How many legs does a spider have? Eight. Let's have some spider emojis. Ladies and gentlemen, now. A couple of weeks ago, we threatened you with the third, or the third, depending which part of the world you're from, the third Garchor Gang Organ Festival. And, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to have the third Garchor Gang Organ Festival. Q Festival picture. There you are. We are going to have, between March the 10th and March the 15th of this year, we are going to have six concerts. Again, a little um, festival. And we have put together a couple of very interesting programs, um, thanks to some help by you guys. Now, the opening concert and the closing concerts are going to also feature ideas by you, members of the Gacho Gang. We got quite a lot of emails from you regarding ideas for the concert, for example, French Romantic Organ Music, for example, 
Bach, for example, Baroque music, for example, all sorts of things. So the opening and closing concerts will be put together with various different ideas from there. Now, another idea that one of you had, and more on that on the day itself, a night of romance. Love songs from throughout the ages, both classical and popular and otherwise. So going from, shall we say, I don't know, going from the late 1700s up to the present day, we will have a night of romance. Love songs, love tunes, tunes connected to the theme of love, which is rather exciting. On the Sunday night, that's March the 12th, we're going to have another silent film night, back by popular demand. A lot of people, a lot of people requested another silent film accompaniment on the theatre organ. Um, everybody really enjoys those nights. Now we've done, we've already done two or three of those now. And uh, the theatre organ, there's the theatre organ in the background, will of course be the ideal choice for a silent film accompaniment. But maybe this time I will actually do it on a classical organ, on a church organ or a concert organ and just show you that it is actually possible to do it on one of those as well. So, the silent film itself has not yet been selected. If you want to help us select the silent film, it has to be under two hours in length. That's the only thing, but it should be, should be well over one hour in length. There are a lot of silent movies that were very short. But between one and two hours in length, um, a silent movie, and it should be royalty free. It must be in the public domain. So if you have an idea, uh, send us an email with a link to that movie. That would be rather good. Now, on March the 13th, that is, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, Oscar Music Night. Uh, Oscar Night over in Hollywood land. So we are going to have an evening of film music once again. And it's going to be music connected to the world of Oscars. Oscar winning music from throughout the years. That was also a suggestion that someone had, which I thought was rather wonderful. And uh, very, very good indeed. And perfect timing because our festival coincides with Oscar night. So, perfect. On the 14th, again, back by popular demand, it will be a jazz band ball. A night of jazzy music at the organ. Both the um, classical and theatre organ with lots of jazzy music. So, if you have some jazzy requests, get them over before March the 14th and we'll get them in there. And then the sixth and final concert will be on Wednesday, March the 15th which will be our closing concert. Uh, a good selection of uh, goodies again from all those, all those genres wrapping things up. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be the third Garchaw Organ Festival. And of course, people are asking, why are we doing this again? Well, well, we are saving up, as we told you before. So we're going to put a lot of work into the, the festival and uh, get some get some good programs together, get some good things. So spread the word, let's get big audiences and let's make it a fun organ festival. Spread the word, the organ music world is a very fun place to be. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have something dreamy. Let's have something dreamy. Harry Connick Jr., Harry Connick Jr., New Orleans's most wonderful, wonderful, wonderful modern musician I don't care what anyone says. There have been a lot of people before and after the Harry Connick. Harry Connick became very famous in the late 80s uh, with his big band Croony style. But then he sort of went back to his roots as a New Orleansy guy. And he is phenomenally good. Phenomenally good. I'd love to meet Harry Connick Jr. I think he's amazing. Wonderful musician. Huge hands. Very jealous. He can stretch, you know, all the big stuff. Uh, I can't do that, unfortunately. Um, but Harry Connick, wonderful guy. Wonderful guy, wonderful musician, wonderful all-round good guy. Does a lot of good things for New Orleans, for his hometown. And uh, yeah, back, it, this was one of his from the album. This was the famous album, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, Rock Oh, God, you're right, we do. We still have the Brown Book of Magnificence to do this evening, ladies and gentlemen. I mustn't forget that. Oh, well, we'll do a theatre organ Brown Book again. Um, that's not a problem. Um... What was that album called? It was a wonderful album, Harry Connick. The, the Recipe of Love was on it, as well as this one. Ba -dum, da -da -dum. Uh, the Recipe of Love needs a piano. Um. That one, 
the recipe of love. Harry Connick, wonderful stuff. Um, and this was on that album as well. It's called I'll Dream of You Again. This was a request by our friend Cam, and it's a lovely ballade. Actually, I have beautiful registrations for a ballad, including a vibraphone. Isn't that cute? Anyway, let's have some of this. Here we go.
such a cute, simple little ballad number there. I'll dream, it actually says it. I'll dream of you again from the 1990 album. Oh, okay, I thought it was the late 80s, but the 1990 album, We Are In Love by Harry Connick Jr. A picture of Harry Connick with an enormous hairstyle and a very late 80s style zoot suit red jacket, as far as I recall. Uh, one of my favorite CDs for a long time. Yeah. Harry Connick Jr. I wonder who Harry Connick Sr. was. And don't say his dad. Gesundheit. That was Vanessa s snorting in the background. Beg your pardon? Yeah. Nix? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I see. Right, all right. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a piece of uh, piece of uh, music on a theatre organ, but not in a theatre organ style. This could be rather interesting. <laughs> this could be interesting. A march. We need a bit of a march here. So we have a piano going on in the background. Right. Now, this is a piece of music from the Brown Book of Magnificence. And its title is a good one. It's uh, Listen to God More Than People, which is... I suppose, not a bad idea sometimes. Anyway, here we are. Let's have a march in the style of the Brown Book of Magnificence.
Ha! <laughs> Isn't that cute? I beg your pardon? Who said that? Cassie? Sounds like Rolf Sikowski. Yeah, you're right. It does a little bit, doesn't it? It's amazing what you can do with a theatre organ. You, see, you start with this. Uh, hold on, let's get rid of the piano quickly. Um... That's a theatre organ without its tremulance. But add to the tremulance the bells and whistles and you get... Oh, sorry. All the pianos and the bells and the whistles and the cymbals and the tambourines. There's a tambourine there. Hear that? A tambourine. Cha cha cha. Don't forget that. Theatre organs are wonderful inventions. Right, do we have a final number for this evening or am I allowed to play something of my own? I think I'll say, yes, indeed, we have Amaric as well. Oh, we have three birthdays coming up in four minutes' time. That's exciting stuff. Right, let's have another one of these. A quick, here's an old George Harrison number that nobody plays anymore, which I think is a terrible song, and you could really play along with it. It's a bit of a blues more than anything else, but with different chords. So let's load up some bluesy sounds here on the organ and have some fun. Rolf Tchaikovsky. It's not Christmas time, folks. I'm not going to sing this. I want to tell you, my head is filled with things to say. When you hear all those words, they seem to slip away. George Harrison, one of his first from 1966. I want to tell you. Wonderful chords. Again, George with his wonderful harmonies. Listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about to become midnight in this 
part of the world. There it is, it's turned midnight. Happy birthday to Judy. It's Judy's birthday. Judy, not in the sky with diamonds, that was Lucy. Judy, who wrote to us a while back to it's a birthday. So happy birthday to Judy. It's Marek's birthday. Happy birthday, Marek. And it would have been George Harrison's 80th birthday. So happy birthday, Judy. Happy birthday, Marek. Happy birthday, George. <laughs> Happy birthday, boys and girls. Have a wonderful day, wherever you are in the world, whatever part of the world you are in. Have a wonderful time, enjoy it, make the most of it. It's a Saturday and hopefully none of you have to do anything in this sinful world of work. So have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Right, that was Friday night is organ music night. Thank you very much for being here in the audience. We will see you again at the very latest on Sunday, tomorrow. There's a wonderful piece of music going up tomorrow. One of my favourite hymn tunes, believe it or not. One of my favourite hymn tunes, and I recorded this a while back. Segne du Maria. And I recorded a version of that recently, and that's going up tomorrow at this sort of usual time that's going up as a proper video, so do check that out when it comes. Um, it's recorded in the organ of Duren with its amazing enchamad pipes. Absolutely wonderful. Mm. Wonderful instrument, so check that one out. And then we will be back, of course, on Sunday night with Sunday night is organ music night. We have some requests already, already for Sunday night, but if you want to get some requests in for Sunday night, gang at garcho.de. And, ladies, oops, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us this evening. Thank you for your tips in the tip jar, for your um, coffees, for your cups of tea, for your virtual <coughs> concert tickets. Thank you very much indeed. And I hope you give us a thumbs up on the way past as well. That's very helpful for the YouTube algorithm and all those amazing things. And, ladies and gentlemen, see you Sunday. Thank you.